Okay, so now we're going to start with 4w, y to the negative 2, over w to the negative 1, y to the third power. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to deal with the exponents. So we're going to multiply everything that's in the exponent by the 3. So it will be w to the negative 1 times 3, and then it's going to y to the 1 times 3. So w to the negative 1 times 3 would be w to the negative 3. And then that would be y to the third. So on the bottom, we're now going to have w to the negative 3, y to the third. And on the top, we're going to have 4, w, y to the negative 2. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take it piece by piece. And we're just going to divide. So it will be 4 divided by that invisible 1. Then it's going to be w, and there's a 1 power, divided by w to the negative 3. And then we're going to do y to the negative 2 divided by y to the third power. So 4 divided by 1 is just 4. When we're dividing exponents, we subtract them. So it would be 1 minus negative 3, which is 1 plus 3, which is equal to 4. So it will be w to the fourth power. And then we'd subtract these two, so it would be negative 2 minus 3, which is negative 5. So it would be y to the negative 5. So, so far we have 4 times w to the 4th power times y to the negative 5th power. So now that we have this all on the same level and we've multiplied everything out, we have to make sure that every answer that we have in the final answer is all positive exponents. Because this is a negative exponent on top, the way that we make that negative exponent a positive exponent is by putting it on the bottom of the fraction. So it would be y to the fifth on the bottom. So our final answer would be 4, w to the fourth, y to the fifth power. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next problem. So we're going to go ahead and do 4g to the third power h squared. And then on the bottom, we're going to have 5g squared h to the negative 3, negative 2. So the first thing we're going to do, again, is we're going to distribute these exponents that are outside the parentheses. So we're going to make sure we distribute to everything. So it's the same as saying 4 to the third power. Then it's going to be g to the third to the third power. Then it's going to be h squared to the third power. And on the bottom, we're going to do the same thing with the negative 2. So it's going to be 5 to the negative 2 power then it's going to be g squared to negative 2, and then we're going to do h to the negative third power times negative 2. All right, so let's go ahead and let's just start with the top piece. So 4 to the third power times g, 3 to the 3 times h. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply that out. 4 to the third power is just 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Um, then we're going to multiply these out, so that would be g times g to the ninth power, and then this would be h to the sixth power because we're doing 2 times 3. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and handle the bottom. So now on the bottom, we have this. So 5 to the negative 2 power, I just like putting that on top, and the reason why I'm just going to put it on top is to make it a positive 5 to the second power, which is 25. But we'll deal with that later, but just to make it at least complicated, when you have a whole number and it has a negative exponent, just put it on the other top, on the other side of the fraction. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the rest of it. So it's g to the second power times negative 2. So that would be g to the negative 4. And then it would be times h, negative 3 times negative 2, which is positive 6. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to just figure out what this 5 squared is, which is 25. So it would be 64 times 25 times g to the ninth power times h to the 6th power. And it's going to be over g to the negative 4th power times h to the 6th power. So 64 times 25, that's just going to give me 1600. And then I'm going to have g to the ninth power times h to the 6th power over g to the negative 4 times h to the 6. So again, we're going to go ahead and we're going to divide the pieces. So 1600 divided by 1 is just 1600. g to the 9th divided by g to the, ne to the negative 4 will be 9 minus negative 4, 
which is 9 plus 4, which is 13. So it will be g to the 13th power. And then h to the 6 divided by h to the 6, you do 6 minus 6, which is equal to 0. h to the 0 power is equal to 1, because anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. So we're multiplying that by 1. So 1600 times 1 is 1600. And then it will be g to the 13th power. The question that I know I'm going to get is how come I put 5 to the negative 2 on the top, but I left this one on the bottom? It was just easier that way. Anytime you have a whole number to a negative power, it's just easier than putting it as 1 over 25 underneath a fraction already. That would have looked crazy. So I just gave you guys the easiest way to do that is just to put it on top. The reason I waited for this negative 4 is because I knew I was going to have to divide them anyway, and I knew that I may end up getting a positive or a negative number, so I just wanted to wait until the end to see if I had to move it to the top or the bottom. In my next um, example, you're going to be able to see that demonstrated. Okay, so now I have a little bit different, but it's still the same concepts. Negative 12, c to the third power, d to the zero power, e to the negative two power, divided by six, c to the fifth power, d to the negative third power, e to the fourth power. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna divide this up because there's no parentheses. Because there's no parentheses when, with an exponent outside, we don't have to distribute anything. We can just go straight to dividing. So negative 12 divided by six is negative two. And then we're gonna do c to the third power over c to the fifth power. So that would be c3 minus 5. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So it would be negative 2. And then c to the negative 2 power. And then it would be d to the 0 divided by d to the negative 3. So 0 minus negative 3, which is 0 plus 3. 0 plus 3 is 3. So it would be d to the third power. And then we do e to the negative 2 divided by e to the fourth. So that'd be negative 2 minus 4, which is negative 6. So it'd be e to the negative 6 power. So this is the answer we end up with. But our final answer should never have negative exponents. It can have negative coefficients, meaning it can have negative numbers, whole numbers, but the exponents should never be negative. So in order to get this get rid of those negatives, we're going to go ahead and draw it as a line. And we're going to go ahead and put this on the bottom and this on the bottom. So c squared is going to go on the bottom. e to the 6 is going to go on the bottom because when you put them on the bottom from the top, they become positive. And on the top, you're going to let, be left with negative 2 d to the third power. So our answer is going to be negative 2 d to the third power over c squared e to the sixth power. So this was a more in-depth tutorial. This is for people who are a little bit more advanced with exponents, but I just wanted to show you guys a few problems that were a little bit more extreme, if you'd say, just so you guys can start getting familiar with the more advanced algebra. Some of you are just taking your college placement exams, so you're gonna be able to just do the basics, meaning multiplying exponents, dividing exponents, moving an exponent that is positive or that it's negative to a different side to make it positive. Those are gonna be some of the basics that you do, but eventually you are gonna to get to advanced algebra and you are gonna to have to apply all the concepts that you've learned. So I wanna be able to show you guys this in advance. Also, another note, if you are taking the AccuPlacer exam, there are questions about exponents. So what I'm gonna do is underneath, I'm gonna set um, put the link to my other video that shows in detail how we can answer the questions that will be similar to the questions that you'll find on your AccuPlacer exam. But I feel like we need to show you all different types of problems. I wouldn't be doing you a favor if I was only showing you all the easy problems and then you got to a test or got to college algebra or got to a class in high school and you're like, wow, I've never seen this before, but I watch Miss Amber every day. So this was a little bit more complicated, but I wanted you guys to be able to see it. I hope this helped you in some way and follow for more videos.